The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John chapter 13 verses 31 to 35. After Judas had gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man will be given glory, and he will bring glory to God. Then, after God is giving glory because of him, God will bring glory to him, and God will do it very soon. My children, I will be with you for only a little while longer. Then you will look for me, but you won't find me. I tell you, just as I told the people, you cannot go where I am going. But I am giving you a new command. You must love each other just as I had loved you. If you love each other, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Hello, and welcome today to St. Michael's International School. You can hear the kids. Uh, running around on the roof upstairs um, and I'm here today because I'm hoping this will have some connection to what uh, I want to talk about, what I want us to think about today. Um, it's raining so it's good to be inside and I'm very uh, glad that the school could uh, let me use their space um, today and in fact um, I'll come back to that a little bit later on. Now this past week I read an article talking about how the Episcopal Church in America has started discussion on whether or not they should give communion to people who are not baptised. Possibly quite a controversial issue, but reading through some of the arguments, I find myself on the supporting side. Shh, don't tell the bishop, although perhaps he may actually be a secret supporter himself. But anyway, reading through that article startled me off on a whole train of thoughts about what exactly we do at church as Christians and why and just how we live out the faith and all those things that Jesus called us to do. And in fact, there is one thing I've always wondered about here and that is why is it that every Saturday morning some of the women of the cathedral congregation and occasionally a few men gather at St Michael's at the cathedral and then spend an hour or two cleaning and polishing and preparing, getting everything ready for the service on Sunday morning. Now my issue is not with that in itself but rather with why all that time is spent preparing for worship making the church suitably beautiful when it could possibly be better spent out and about in the neighbourhood, meeting people and doing things for them or for the community at large. And if people really want to do some cleaning then why not go and help those people who can't clean their own homes? Now perhaps this oversimplifies things but at times it does seem as if the cathedral is focusing on the wrong things. But let me get it straight, this beef is not only with our cathedral here, but probably with most churches around the world. But hey, that's only my feeling. So I want to see today what the gospel we just heard might have to say about that, because I think there are some clues in there. Now, to set the scene, we find Jesus seated with the disciples at the Last Supper. He's just washed their feet, shared a meal with them, and Judas has left the party. And now Jesus is giving what has become known as his farewell discourse, his last few words before he heads out to the Garden of Gethsemane, before he gets arrested and starts that slow walk to the cross. And it's here that Jesus wants to get across a very important message to his followers. Before he goes away, before he's not around anymore to encourage them and correct them. And what he wants to give to them is a new commandment. That they love each other just as he has loved them. Now you may think, hey that's not new. 
And you'll be right. Well, you'll be partially right. Because if we look back to the beginning of the Bible, we'll see that there is already a commandment to love others. Leviticus 19 makes that pretty clear. So what's different today? Well, it's that Jesus says that through doing that, through loving others as Jesus loved them, and that's the important bit, through doing that, everybody will know that they are followers of Jesus. It'll be like a, a calling card, if you like. And with that love being, as we said, the love that Jesus gave them, it means it's much more than just loving your family or your friends or those you get along with or the people that you like. It's much, much more than that. Because we need to remember that Jesus' love was not just shown to the people that he liked. It was shown by reaching out to the sick, to the poor, to the outcast, and to those people in shady places at the edge of society. It wasn't just shown to the people in his inner circle. And that means that if we're called to do the same, then we need to do the same. We need to follow Jesus' example. Now look at the church, and I mean the people, not the building. Are we following those instructions? Are we loving as Jesus loved? Are we taking care of the weak and the vulnerable? Are we offering hope to those in despair? Are we welcoming the stranger? Do we work to bring God's kingdom come amongst us? You know, we pray for it every week in the Lord's Prayer, but are we working to do it? Well, that is a kingdom where, as our reading today, our second reading from the book of Revelation told us, God will wipe away all the tears from those who are sad, and there'll be no more suffering, and there will be no more pain. So if we're working to bring that kingdom, it means we need to support those in need. We need to support those in difficulty. We need to bring hope and comfort to those in the midst of pain and chaos and anguish that they find themselves. And is that all seriously done best through keeping the pews clean and nicely arranged and having all our communion linens freshly, crisply pressed? I'll let you decide on that. You know, we can reach out to our neighbours if we want to. We can love one another and care for those outside our normal circles if we want to. We can love as Jesus loved if we want to. And that is just what Jesus is reminding his disciples. Exactly what the kingdom of God is all about. How it's about justice and mercy. How it's about helping the poor and supporting the weak and the marginalised. And how it all boils down to love. The love of Jesus for his world. Love shown through those who say that they follow him. Now I'm sorry if today it sounds like I'm on a bit of a rant, but I think that at times the church, like any big organisation, sometimes gets a bit stuck up on itself and it loses sight of what it's really all about and what it should be really all about. So at those times I think there are two things that we need to do when we realise that perhaps we're a little bit off track and we need to get back on course with God. I think we need to think back to what Jesus really asked his followers to do. Because we are his followers, and we are his followers as followers, if you like. So we need to think about what it was that he said to them, and what he asked them to consider and to focus on. And secondly, I think we need to remember the wise words of William Temple. And he was Archbishop of Canterbury back in 1942 to 1944. And he was also, by the way, the only Archbishop of Canterbury whose dad was also Archbishop of Canterbury, so a pretty clever family, or very well connected at least. But William Temple, he said, the church is the only society that exists for the benefit of those who are not its members. Now my words today are certainly not 
only for our cathedral here, but I'm going to guess for most churches, where time is spent making things nice and clean so worship can be enjoyed in comfort by those who attend, by those who are the members, rather than going out to serve those who are not inside the clubhouse. Now in the week, when I was thinking about this week's theme, one song came to mind, and that was the folky 60s hit, We Are One in the Spirit. And the lyrics for the last verse of that song go like this. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. As Jesus said, people will see and know who we are, what we are, not because of how ordered our worship is, nor how clean our churches are, but by our love, by showing the love and care of Christ to his people and to his world. And that's why I'm here today, because this is where we now worship, and I love it. It's bright, it's airy, and it's alive. Our small congregation gathers to praise God in this place, in this beautiful place. And it doesn't matter if there are crumbs on the floor, it doesn't matter if the brasses are not polished, or if we don't actually have any brasses. And it doesn't matter that our altar is a countertop with candle holders from the 100 yen store. What is important is that we follow the command of Jesus to love one another as he has loved us. And that is the challenge that we all go out with today, or being in a school setting, that is our homework for this week and beyond. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of your Son who loved without limit and cared for all around him. Inspire us and enable us to do the same. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. <laughs>